Hello, folks. I have to make this quick because I have to get some sleep because I have a very busy day tomorrow. I am the one, the only, Hobo Tom. You're watching the Hobo and his girlfriend, which is something I'm still working on a little bit. Well, I'm here to talk about AEW because it is a Wednesday night and I don't feel like watching NXT. I like to vary my wrestling experience. And, um, just something different. Can AEW a, a, a good show? I want to know if they're going to come here to Daytona Beach because they're going to a bunch of big cities, but they tend to be going to the smaller hockey arenas slash college arenas. I wonder if they'll come up to UNF or come down to UNF. Indeed. I'd go see that at UNF. Pull some alumni strings, I guess. Go see that. That'd be fun, I guess. That would be different. College crowds are different. Young, nubile, tight-skinned. College girl. Oh, wait a second. Let me focus, folks. So I'm here to talk about AEW. Not college. Tight spandex sport. Wait a second. Fell into that trap again. I apologize. I digress. Before I before I do anything else that will get me in trouble or kicked off of YouTube, Village, you sir, just told Nikki Cross to take it all off. And the reason why Stu's got the video dedication is that he decided to chat me up in the Discord over on, on YouTube. Again, if, oh, I have to I have to give out two more. I just realized that, too. Let's see here. Let me... I, I forgot I was doing a show today. Actually, it's because yesterday. Because yesterday was my kind of day off from wrestling stuff. Because it's like Tuesday, Thursday... And then odds on Sundays. Let's see here. Oh, Manuel Ortiz commented twice. Manuel Ortiz! You, sir. Are my tag team partner? There we go. So that, yeah, yeah, he commented twice. I can only give him one. Five stomps. I know he commented on the Hell in a Cell. I'd be fine with five stomps, some special ones with weapons, but really, yeah. Shinsuke Nakamura, the Kabuki Warriors, Io Shirai. Says if WWE doesn't, doesn't know how to book baby face Asians, Rio. No, you know what I say? They might as well bring back the Jumping Bomb Angels. They should have called them the Jumping Bomb Angels Part 2. Or the Jumping Bomb Angels. Go old school like that. I think I impressed someone once. He's like, name one female tag team. And I said, the Jumping Bomb Angels. And they're like, whoa. You remember that? Yeah, that was way back in the day. But, again, that's just old person knowledge. Oh, what the heck? Ouch. Something must have got me. Now I've been doing yard work the past couple days. And I live in Florida, which is just one big giant anthill. I wonder what that was. I'll deal with that later. My legs are all kind of messed up right now. 
That, that's okay. You don't need to hear about my medical problems. God knows I don't want to hear about my medical problems. You want to hear about AEW Wrestling. AEW. AEW. Uh, show starts off as a really hot show. I like the fact that they don't, they do very little promos. They, they, they do what Impact does, which is they have like a three to at most five minute segment where they tell the audience what they're going to see. Saying, these are the matches tonight. We'll hear from this person, this person, this person. Throw in a surprise or two, which is always good. And they go on from there. And, and I like that. It's like, oh, I have something to look forward to. Uh, WWE used to do that. They do when you're live. They kind of tell you who's there. Heck, that does freaking me. That was weird. Just came on, like, all of a sudden. <laughs> maybe I'm feeling, maybe the, the pain in my knees, knees gone. Now it's the pain in my the side of my foot. Freaking ants. God, I hate them. Oh, I already performed ants again, and I have to do that again, too. Actually, the yard did it, because the yard's flooded. It's been nothing but rain. Got more rain today than the supposed hurricane. See, this is why I need a girlfriend co-host, so they can keep me straight. But so we start off with the Young Bucks and Private Party and part of the, the Best of the World Tag Team Champion. I think they already had... Why do I think either Defiant or IPW had like a World Tag Team Champion thing already? And that she did have tag teams from around the world. So again, this is more yeah, it's 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 a little international, but not really. I think you only have. I don't think there's a Canadian tag team. The only south of the border tag teams, the Lucha Brothers. Everyone else is from the states somewhere. I don't know. I don't do branding. I can barely brand myself. So, with this match, it was actually really fun. I like the fact that AEW starting off the show is really hot. They're getting the crowds into it. Uh, it was a good, fun match. The, the private party, they're fun. They have the super kicks well scouted, too. And, oh, let's see here. There we go. That's probably better. My camera doesn't like it when I do things way too fast. Um, again, at one point, bodies go flying everywhere. It's pretty cool. It's really the thing I like about this match is that the Young Bucks can still put on a really fast-paced match. It's still exciting. Um, and then Isaiah Cassidy, ooh, he took that rough bump when he got powerbombed on the ramp. I mean, the Bucks—they're just so good. I, I, I find it funny. I find it funny that the Bucks have to like kind of motivate the crowd to to, to say, "Hey." I have him in the sharpshooter. Oh, tap, 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 tap. They try and motivate the crowd to, to cheer for him, which is... It's just one thing when the crowd does it very spontaneously. It's another thing when it's, you're, like, begging for it. It would be like me going to an NXT show saying, Hobo Tom! And everyone would probably stare at me and throw their soda cans at my head. And, and who knows what else. Some hot dogs would be tossed my way. You use hot dogs. Mustard and ketchup on a freaking mess. But yeah, it was it was good. I, both teams are excellent at tag team wrestling. I mean the tag team the tag team work by the Bucks is so smooth. It's amazing. Again, they are brothers. They've probably been doing this since they were like five or something. Um and again AEW has it right because they do do the true hot tags. With WWE, they get the hot tag, and then the other guy kind of like cools off the tag. But I guess Jim Cornette's probably happy about that. And that was <laughs> these crowds are vocal. I don't know what happened. Someone just like screamed. Um, again, the Young Bucks, they have all their. Their flippy moves. It's amazing. Even even the private party. I've bumped that up. I think they're 
right on par with the with the street profit. I may be getting a lot of flack for saying that, but that's my opinion. If you want your opinion, you can feel free to comment or email. And if you do, no matter what you say, unless it's somewhat inappropriate, it'll be read here at YouTube, and you, and you get your video dedication, or you just get a picture. And I think only, I've only had to do that once, which is good. I think someone said something they probably regret, and I said, "Hey, you know what? You're a picture of this." Oh yeah, I get the last laugh. Um, however, it, was, uh, it did become a spot fest. Only thing that turned me off a little, I'm like, oh, that, that shooting start press. Shooting start press should be a finisher for everyone. No one should ever kick out a shooting start press. It's way too pretty looking. And the private party won by surprise roll up. Indeed. And I'll tell you what, this was a fun surf and turf match. And it kind of does answer the question a little bit. Would the Young Bucks be willing to job out to younger talent that can do more? Or are they going to hog all the glory for themselves like, like Cody somewhat has? I mean, he is wrestling for... I think the he's wrestling Chris Jericho at full gear in November. And I wonder if all these names are between video games, because I know there's Gears of War and casino stuff, like the like like the all in, all out casino battle royal, which they they still need to do a better job describing it. I understand it, just to see honestly a quick five minute backstory about it. Have the people back there pick cards and say, oh, well, I don't have to go in there with you. That that could actually be really interesting. Hey, AEW, I have booking ideas. It'll only cost you a quarter and a lifetime of no copyright violations. I work cheap. Uh, so, so then uh, Jericho comes out, promo. He brings out everyone else. Uh, mentioned that they've created a new name, I guess, whatever it is. Jericho's trying so hard to be a heel. <laughs> and <laughs> JR calls it. <laughs> it was funny because JR has to realize that sometimes he's not going off the air at the right time. He's like, nice segment. Um, when, when Jack Hagar showed up, people started, people started to chant, we, we, I mean, we the people. I'm like, shut up. That was created by bad creative. Oh, did Chris Jericho just break that magical kayfabe again? So that was pretty cool. It's always fun to hear wrestlers like break kayfabe or give small insights. Again, just un poco insights to the wrestling business as a whole. It makes it a little bit more interesting to watch. Especially when you get older, you're like, yeah, I can say I've probably seen almost every type of match with most everything used in, in said match. I want to know a little bit about what happens at gorilla position. That's, to me, that's interesting. I could ask so many people so many fun questions. Like, listen, I'll never say this. I just want to know for me how much a coat that they all do. Because you know what the answer is. All the coke. That's something else though. For discussions for another day. And then the next match we had was Jimmy Havoc versus Darby Allen. Uh, Darby Allen tried the handshake, but I knew something was screwy because it was the left hand. And that's, that's when you wrestle. You shake hands, you shake hands with the right. Even I know basic stuff. Like that. Um, he pulled it into a Lama Heistra. That's one of those wrestling moves that just looks so pretty to do. Uh, Jimmy Havoc just goes on biting. He does a very British thing of going after fingers. Someone brought that up. He's right, because all the British wrestlers do go after the fingers for some reason. That must be a British thing to do. 
But Jimmy Havoc just bites the fingers. That's just, that's great. I mean, that harkens back to the days of like AWA and like the Moon Dogs, where they would just like bite people in random places too. And more recently, Matt Hardy when he used to bite he used to bite people as part of the Broken Universe. Yes. Uh, what else happened? Oh, that was a sleeper suplex. That looked pretty cool. Um, Jimmy Havoc. Again, he starts to work with the hand. He's pretty good at that. Bangs against the ring, ring post a couple times. <laughs> Darby Allen, he, he can do a lot of stuff off the rope, too. He's no slouch. Oh, that, that was a tiger driver. Oh, whenever I see any version of a pile driver, it's always good. And Darby Allen actually hit that coffin drop from the top rope. He finally figured out his positioning, which is always good to see, so he, just, so he doesn't kill himself. He almost said with that Cody match. This is a fun match. Darby Allen went over. The right person won because Darby Allen is going to take on Chris Jericho next week for the AEW title. Again, this is this is this is this was a fun match. I enjoyed it. You don't have to have death matches all the time. Once in a while, it's okay. Or, or cracker barrel brawls. But this was a traditional wrestling match. I enjoyed it. They did some cool stuff. This was a surf and turf match. Then we had, I guess, I guess the low, low point of the show. And to me, for some reason, Impact Wrestling has the best women's division. Tino Dasher doesn't do it for me, though. I think the fact that they had the characters and strong characters, though. That you have Rosemary, Too Young, Ty Valkyrie, uh, Kiera Hogan, Madison Reigns, okay. Uh, they have Jessica Havoc, who's good. And then every so often they'll have like like a jobber to face someone. Local enhancement talent. But the core of Impact's women's divisions, I really think is the best. NXT and WWE's top heavy. Where you know Becky's good, Charlotte's good. Everyone else... Uh, Nikki Cross is good. Alexa Bliss is good. Everyone else is like a kind of weird mid-card range. NXT, it's again, feast or famine. You're either Io Shirai, Candice LeRae, Shayna Baszler, or, or, or you're just Jobber, or, or Mrs. Jobber. Jobber's thought here. But that's the way, that's the way it goes. Um, Bianca Belair is okay. She hasn't gotten a big push, though. Ali is going to be an NXT lifer. Victoria Bourne is going to be an NXT lifer. Who else is an NXT lifer? A couple of them are. I mean, Chelsea Green, Andrew Gurney, Nixon Newell. Well, not Nixon Newell. It's um, Egan Knox. I have to cure myself of that. She's good, but haven't really seen enough of her. At least in NXT. So this match, uh, B. Priestley and Sakura takes on Britt Baker and Riho. <laughs> Riho is so small. She actually makes that belt look big. When they showed the size of that woman's belt, I thought it was kind of small. It was old school. I, I didn't mind it so much. It looks big on Riho. It looks tiny on, like, everyone else, though. So I guess it's good that Nyla Rose didn't win it because that belt would have looked probably terrible on her. But Riho, I guess it fits. Uh, Sakura hits the Mexican surfboard. I love old-school wrestling moves. I think that's one of the first wrestling moves I ever tried to try. To try. It looks I'm like, that looks cool. I think it was the Mexican surfboard, the sleeper, and the pile driver were my three moves. That was my move set. Uh, B. Priestley and Sakura, they just like caught Riho and then just like flopped on their back. That was funny. And and, and then Bree has to Bree Priestley or Miss Osprey has to work. Oh yeah, this came down to a battle of 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 <laughs> Miss Cole versus Miss Osprey. I wonder if there's any 
heat between those two women because of what Seth said about Will. You never know. Again, one of those infamous questions. That, that you, you turn the microphone off for, turn off the recorder. It's like, listen. So these two just pretend not to like each other. Or is it because of what their boyfriends, fiancés, husbands, husbands say? That would be interesting to know. That would be one of my questions. And the girlfriend question was, oh, your nails are so pretty. What kind of nail polish is that? What kind of hair, hair stuff is that? I'd be like asking like intelligent questions. Again, I had that plan a while ago. But um, then Bree Priestley and, and Britt Baker just like fight each other. I'll tell you what, Bree Priestley does have to work on her outfit. There's almost wardrobe malfunction on Bree Priestley's part, so I can see Bree's thong. And yes, it it was a thong. Now, Riho can sell. She, she just gets, like, tossed around. And then there was a spinning Vader bomb, which is so cool. Then, like, the announced team started arguing, oh, it's Vader bomb. The thing's saying, no, it's a Leon White bomb. No, it's a Vader bomb. Uh, it was a good match. Britt Baker, uh, Sakura, and that, like, rings a Saturn mandible claw thing. That doesn't look good. It's, it's like the easy way to pull out of it's just like bite her fingers. At least when mankind did it, he either had that weird finger wrap or he used the sock or he used Mr. Socko. So, yeah, that barehanded sticking my fingers down someone else's mouth just seems weird. And Bray also, remember, Bray also uses a glove. So at least there's some protection against the teeth. Uh, Britt Baker and, and Riho won. It was a good match. I enjoyed just the fighting between Bray Priestley and Britt Baker. I don't know how much of that was a shoot. Because they just look like they're fighting each other. So it was good. It was, this was a cheeseburger match. Then we have John Moxley versus Sean Spears. This was another fun match. Um, and then Bastard Pac. Oh, it's best Pac. Bastard Pac is best Pac. Second only to Sleep Depraved Neville. I think when Neville lost his belt to Enzo Amore, and 205 Live, it looks like he just went, like, s without sleep and just, like, a absolutely tortured. That's the best, but Bastard Pox, pretty close. So he was there on commentary. Uh, Sean Spears, he just looks weird with the mohawk. He he's he's clean-shaven. <laughs> I wonder if the mo I wonder whose idea the mohawk was. Was it his idea, his wife's idea, Peyton Royce, or his other wife's idea, Billy Kay. I wonder who had that idea, because, I don't know, you have to be a special individual to have a mohawk. Does not really work on him. Again, look at who's talking to folks. So again, always remember where the source comes. It was a good. It was a fun match, though. Um, and then Tully Blanchard got involved. I thought the belt was going to come off. That, that would have been interesting. Moxley seems like he's getting more of the match that he wants to have, which is good for John Moxley. They do a lot more wrestling outside. A lot more of the storytelling's done in the ring. It's not the three to seven moves of Doom. It's not the same spot over and over and over again. It's different. It's, it's there's variety. And folks, variety is the spice of life. So I think he's having fun. He's like, yeah, I, he probably has a little bit more freedom. It's like, well, let's work this match. Let's do this now. And Sean Spears, I'm sure, is like, yeah, that sounds that sounds interesting. Um, oh, Moxie won, I guess, with a Death Rider. 
or they called it something else. And then Kenny Omega comes out. Oh, but before we get to the Kenny Omega part, this was a fun. It was a fun match. There was a back and forth, good brawling outside. Again, a good solid cheeseburger match. Then Kenny Omega comes out. In one hand, he has a broom wrapped with barbed wire. The other hand, he has a baseball bat wrapped with barbed wire. He just like rolls the base or tosses a baseball bat with the barbed wire towards Moxley. Moxley picks it up. And then Bastard Pac just, just nails Kenny from behind in a chair headshot and just kind of left Moxley to himself. Bastard Pox, so good. Uh, then we have the main event, because they'll always announce the time limit. And I do like the fact that they say, this has a TV time limit. So you kind of know when it's going to end. But like this match was weird, because now they're go, they're, they have the end of the match. And then you're like, but there's six minutes left. So it was Dustin, Dustin Rhodes and Hangman Page taking on Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho, and Sammy Guevara lost to Panda. My ex-girlfriend would be very upset with that. She liked pandas. Now he's the, the Latin sex something. Sexy Latino Sammy Guevara. I have no idea. I think Chris Jericho makes half this stuff up on the fly. But with this, it was pretty good. Uh, Dustin just starts to beat up Jericho outside the ring. He just want, he just wants at Jericho. He could really care less. For the most part, it was a fairly good back and forth match. You could tell uh, Chris Jericho was showing his age because Sammy Guevara is taking a lot of major bumps. Um, I do like the TV time limit. Uh, Hanging Page, he's really good. Uh, Dustin, <laughs> Dustin's great. Uh, eventually, Dustin does get the hot tag because Hang Hangman Page takes takes a lot of bumps from both Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho. So Dustin gets the hot tag. Fly, Dustin, fly! Never saw him fly. I think I only saw him fly like that when he did when he had his little stint on Two Hundred Five Live. That was pretty cool. And the crowd chant, "You still got it." And I think that's the only thing that's beginning to annoy me is that the wrestlers are really plotting the. Crowds to chant. Like again, tap, tap. Oh, okay, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll chant when we want to chant. Or um, Sakura goes. Again, because she's like the female Freddie Mercury. <laughs> Trying to do the queen thing. It's like the crowd's like, oh, we can do this. Dun, dun, tch. dun, dun, tch. We will, we will rock you. Sakura. Sakura. I guess. I don't know how it goes. But uh, Dustin sets up Chris Jericho for Shattered Dreams. Jake Hager gets involved twice. Once on the outside, he just like clubs Hangman Page from like the middle. I don't even know where Hangman Page came from. He just got ran over by Jake Hagar. And then in the ring, as Sammy Guevara grabbed the ref, so we had a distracted ref spot. Always good to see the heels bring that. And Jake Hagar saved Chris Jericho from the Shattered Dreams. That ref miss you. <laughs> Jericho has some of the best lines. He's so, he's so good at talking. I think that comes with age, because if you've ever noticed, Wrestlers that got older. Uh, Goldberg has a much improved promo. Older wrestlers, I think they realize, yeah, I can't do all the fun stuff in the ring, but I can do it. Aren't, but I've learned I'm so comfortable with myself, I can give the best promo ever. Jericho did win with the, the Judas effect. Winning back elbow. Whatever. Uh, then they just start to beat up Dustin Rhodes. Let's go! The Fiend shows up? No, not The Fiend, but Cody Rhodes shows up. Uh, starts to beat up him. Then LAX shows up. They beat up everyone. Now the faces make the save, and MJF is a face? He's the face that runs down the crowd? That's a weird face. Or is he the, the heel that does good things? The accidental heel. 
Or is he the accidental face? Uh, who else came in? Darby Allen came in. He came in. He came in on a skateboard. It was a kickflip onto Chris Jericho. That's pretty cool. And then to end the show, Chris Jericho grabs the mic. Say, I'm going to kill you next week, you biatch. Again, life profanity. That's always good. You piece of, well, more stinky piece of garbage. And that was AEW. Oh, that match, actually, that was, that was a good match. It was a cheeseburger match. And that was AEW. I can't complain. It was a it was a good cheeseburger of a show. If I could I'd give it a bacon cheeseburger. So it just seem it doesn't seem like a surf and surf show. It just seemed really good. Definitely better than raw. SmackDown, that's another thing. NXT, NXT is NXT. I'll tell you what, so it'll be interesting. I think SmackDown will be more so of AEW Dynamite's competitor. And then I guess Raw would be competing with Impact? Indeed. Well, everyone have a good night. Remember, I have my show on Friday. So we went a little bit later. Um, Friday, I go back to work. So I have to catch SmackDown a little bit later. But again, that is a Red Wine and Pizza Friday. Where I do my SmackDown and Impact review until the 22nd. And the 22nd on Tuesday is when I start Tuesday Night Impact. We'll see. Everyone have a good night.